descendants, partners, companions, and the part of the righteous throughout the world. And peace be unto you. as salamu alaykum. We are forever thankful to Allah. Highly glorified is he for once again allowing us to come together for this wonderful part of the day. Wonderful part of Jummah. It's Friday. Salat so is a very special time. In fact, we just talked about what this ideal of, of Juma, what it means for our development, what Juma means for our development. You now we know one of the attributes of Allah is he's Al-Jami. He's the gatherer. When you think about the gatherer, he's bringing something together. In fact, when you look at all this creation, that's what you find. You find all of these elements and forces that come together. When they come together, they produce something. It's a formula for water. It's a combination of things that come together to produce water. So if Allah is out of jamming, he's bringing together these minds. He's bringing together the human spirit. He's bringing together all of these possibilities. And the human being is able to experience great diversity. I mean, don't just mean diversity in terms of cultures, but diversity as human beings, because all of us have our uniqueness. When he created us, he created all of us different. As simple as that sounds, it's powerful. So because he created all of us different, because all these other forces in creation have their uniqueness, but when they are combined, when those forces come together, it would do something great. That's why he's al -Jami. He's the one that collects. He's the one that gathers. That's what Juma represents. Juma itself is the time that the believers come together. We come together in one spirit. We come together in love. We come together with the spirit to seek forgiveness so we can be better human beings. We come together seeking mercy so we can be better human beings, so we can relieve ourselves of some of the emotional, psychological pain that we carry. He makes it clear, he says, to Prophet Muhammad, and inform my servants, and tell my servants that I am the forgiving, the merciful. You know how powerful that is, human beings? I'm telling you, Muhammad, to tell my servants that I am, here's the position, Allah makes it clear his relationship with you. He said, inform them, let them know that I am the forgiving, the merciful. So that you can move in the world with some relief. That Allah is not holding you to your yesterday. See, if, if, if Allah didn't forgive us, we'll be burdened with a whole lot of guilt and a whole lot of shame. He says, tell them that I am forgiving. That's, that's, that's heavy right there. So you can know that Allah says in the Quran that there's a certain way that he created the human being. And because there's a certain way he created a human being, he's letting us know that I know you. And I need you to know that in your journey through life and all your challenges, I forgive you. Because without forgiveness, the energy is locked up. All you have to do is think about the relationship you've had with people, or people you know who just won't forgive somebody. And how stagnant, how cold the energy is. It just doesn't move. It's no circulation. There's no bonding. I don't really care for you. And they get locked up and get locked step in that position. So Allah said, I don't want you to operate like that. I don't want you to be afraid of something you did before. He said that the only thing he won't forgive you for, if you associate partners with him. Because he makes he make it clear who he is in your life. 
He's the creator. He's the given. He's the appreciative. He's the merciful. He lets you know who he is. And he let us know that he has the power. He's, he's, the, he's Al-Kawi. He has the power, the ultimate power. And that we shouldn't give that power to other things or other people. So he said, because you understand that, why would you give your power and submit your will to another force that is dependent upon the ultimate force, who is Allah, highly glorified as So we come to Juma, we come to Juma with that kind of thinking. That he's bringing this human being together. He's Allah Jami. He's the collector, he's the gatherer. And we're in Juma, here's the period of time when the call is given, we break off from what we're doing. We break off from being a lawyer, we break off from being a doctor, we break, break off from being the man who makes the peace, we break off from being the sign, we break off for, for greater concern at that moment. And he brings together all these human beings who have the potential to produce something great. I just told you, all those forces in creation, all those different elements, when they're combined, when they come together, they produce something great. There's a formula behind everything. And that formula, those separate entities, once joined together, can produce greatness. Now, if that is the case, what about the, when the human being sees himself as a unique force in creation? And then he combines his forces with other creatures, other human beings in the creation. Just imagine what he or she can produce when they combine forces with other human beings who understand their unique power in creation because they have a role to play. You have to realize that all of us are born into a world that needs us. We are born into a world that needs us. And you have to see yourself like, you have to see yourself as a, as a means of aiding someone. That is someone who needs me. That's why Allah tells us to give, to share, to spend, because someone needs you. They need your time, they need your ear, they need your love, they need your resource, they need your strength. We're born into a world that needs us. See, most people don't realize it. Because some people see themselves as recipients. They see themselves on the end of taking and not giving. That's why selfishness is not tolerated in Islam. Selfishness. All throughout the Quran, Allah tells you to give. Because you already realize you are born into a world that he created that needs you. They need your mind, they need your spirit, they need your concern, they need your empathy, they need your forgiveness. They need your resources. So he's the one that can bring the separate forces together to produce something great. So this is a wonderful time, Juma, the Juma Salat. This is a wonderful time of the part of this day. This is a special day, but it's not a day that has any stopping. This is not a Sabbath. We don't stop living. We don't stop functioning. The Juma prayer is a part of the day that we stop. And when we stop, we stop and get refueled. When we come to Juma, we hear the Quran, we hear the life of Muhammad the Prophet, and we hear some relevant information about life. We should be restored. We come to Juma to get refueled, to go out and function in a very dysfunctional world. That's why we give that greeting. When we give that greeting, we say, May Allah's peace. 
May the peace that flows and comes from the source of peace be on your life. That greeting is so powerful. That greeting is consistent with your very nature. He said, he named you Muslim. That, that, that greeting, Sadaan. That's your nature. It's consistent. So it registers with your spirit. And that's what you need when you go out into a very hostile world. A very cold world. There's still love. If you go into a cold world, a dysfunctional world, you need Sadaan. You need peace on your life. So that greeting is a reminder of what we long for. We have to build society. We need peace. We have to build our homes. We need peace. You have to build your business. You need peace. Without it, you can't function. You can't function in a business that there's nothing but chaos. You need all in your business. You need noise reduction in your business. So when we say Asalaam, well, then we say that may the peace that comes from Asalaam, the source of peace, be on your life. You got peace right now? When you leave this Musala, you go outside, you don't know what you're going to be faced with. That's why when we see each other, Asalaam, well, they can, may Allah's peace be on your life right at this moment. Because you may be troubled right now. And if you understand what's being said, may Allah's peace be in your life. I don't care if you got financial challenges, you have health challenges. Whatever you're troubled with, may Allah's peace be on your life. Now when you understand that, that's a powerful greeting. Because you don't know what the human being is going through. You don't know what the human being is experiencing. And if you understand the very nature and power of that greeting, it will do something for your soul. May Allah's peace be on you. I'm, I'm, I'm communicating a powerful message to you when I say, As-salamu And then you say back, Wa alaykum salam, because you understand that you need Allah's peace on your life. And when we move with that kind of understanding, we can be much more effective because where there's no peace, there's going to be very little progress. Because that's what the human being needs. He needs, he needs peace because it's, a, it's an attracting force. That's what man really wants, peace. In fact, we talked before, some go to war to establish peace. Not just for the sake of war, but to establish peace. That's why Allah said that if there's any believer if one is the most aggressive, then all those believers present should go against the oppressor and to, to, to the aggressor and to Isamin. That's how he sent you peace is for your life. Brother, you breaking the peace. If they're breaking the peace, then all of us who have concern for peace should go against that force. Peace is the major force in society, in the world. Because with peace, salam, it's a discipline. And you know that's what Muslim means? Muslim means not just one who submits to peace, but Muslim means discipline. It means security. And if you submit your will to Allah consciously, that's what you're going to have. You're going to have peace in your life, and you're going to have security. You're not going to be lacking that. If you understand the very nature and purpose of peace, it sets the foundation for you to build your life. So when we say, As-salamu alaykum, may the peace that comes from the source of peace be on your life, and you understand what that means, it does something for your soul, because that's your very nature. So we say, Allah is al jami he's the one that brings the forces together. As conscious believers, Submitting our will to Allah, following the formula that he laid out in the Quran. If we follow that formula, it will lead us to experiencing community life. It's a very, very powerful concept. In fact, Allah tells us about community life. In fact, he tells us that this ummah is one. 
Verily this um of yours is one um. And I am your evolver. Therefore serve me. Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, described the community give you a picture. Because you have to understand that's how the human being think. The human being think not in words, but he think in pictures. That's why Allah gives us the picture. And through the words, but he gives us the picture for us to imagine what paradise looks like. You can't even imagine and touch what it means, rivers flowing, but, you, you, but it's pictures. He paints a picture because that's how the human being thinks. If I mention car to you, the first thing coming to your mind is the car that you like, not the word car. You think in pictures. So the prophet gives us the picture of the community just like a physical body. And he said, and when one part of that body is hurting, then the whole body experiences that discomfort. Verily, this um of yours is one. And I am your rub. Um. We know mother. The very foundation. And it's interesting that Allah said, He is your community, is just like a mother. And the mother role is so powerful that you've heard the hadith about who should you respond to? Is it your mother or is it your father? And it was, I believe, three times mother before once towards the father. Laying the emphasis on the power of motherhood. Because the mother is the one that's nurturing the life. The mother is the one that's carrying that growing life. Whether this um of yours is one um, and I am your evolver, therefore serve me. That mother's carrying that life. For nine months that child is dependent upon its life being sustained from what goes into the mother's body and goes to the mother's mouth. The role of community is just like that of a mother. That the community must see itself as being responsible for shaping carrying, nurturing, and growing life. That's the role of a community. Verily this um of yours is one um, and I am your evolver, therefore serve me. What are you producing? The mother gives life. When you see yourself having principles laid out in the Quran, you have to ask yourself, what are you producing? Because that's what a mother does. A mother carries and produces life. Then she delivers that life so that that life can make a contribution to the world. That's why I said we, we're born into a world that needs us. And when Allah created you, he gave your life purpose. He created you. In fact, he says in the Quran about work you in your place. We get back to the body. We get back to the community. The body. You know, you talk about organization. The very root of organization is organ. And that's what's in your body. Organs. And all, all those organs have a unique and special role so that this body can function effectively. Liver, kidney, spleen, heart, brain, all these organs allow your body to function effectively if those organs are healthy. So we're striving for a healthy community. And when all those organs are operating function, they're, they're operating effectively, then they're working in their place. And when you see yourself as a member 
of a community just like those organs are members of your body. If one is taken out, there's going to be some kind of discomfort. There's going to be some uh, deficiency. You may still be able to operate to some degree, but you won't get the maximum because that organ is essential to the growth of that body. And when you see yourself as a member of a community, you see yourself just like that, as being essential to the effectiveness of that community or that body. Barely this umma of yours is one umma, and I am your evolver, therefore serve me. Service. Rambo. We talked before about this ideal of, of slavery. And how the slave, because the Quran talks about spending your resources for the freeing of the slave. I said you were born into a world that needs you. And most people haven't even come to the awareness that they're slaves. He said, I am, he's, he, he's positioning himself in your life in a powerful way. He makes it clear, and I am your evolver. Not nobody else. He created you, gave you life, gave you power, gave you status in the world made you his slave, his servant, because if you bow to anything other than the Lord, it takes you down. That's why I told you before, Abdullah is the highest position you can take in the world. You can't go no higher than being Abdullah. To worship anything other than the law is bondage and it takes you down. When you assume the position of being Abdullah, you worship of Allah, Allah lifts you up. That's why he said, I am your Rob. I'm the one that's allowing you to graduate. That's Rob. Rob is taking you from weakness to strength. Rob is taking you from darkness into a lightness. Rob is allowing you to come up so you can come to the awareness of understanding the function and design for your life. That's Rob. You remember I tell you what Harriet Tubman said? about the slave, she said she freed 1,000 slaves, but could have freed 1,000 more if they only knew they were slaves. They couldn't see that they were slaves. She said, I got 1,000, but the other ones couldn't see themselves being in bondage. They thought that was normal. <coughs> Allah said, I am your rob. Therefore, bond with me. Connect your spirit and connect your will with me, and I will allow you to graduate in the world. That's what I do. But if you allow yourself to follow the way of shaitan, you go into captivity. Because the mission of shaitan is to lock you up. Muhammad the Prophet وسلم, said that, that shaitan flows through the body like blood. Now I talked to you about this before. And I said if you understand blood and what blood does in terms of circulation going through your body, it's so subtle right now. Your heart is pumping blood through your veins and arteries and you can't even feel it. And that is how subtle Shaitan operates in your body. Blood is moving all through your system, all through this body, but you can't feel it. And if you're not conscious, Shaitan will be all up in your head and all up in your heart, and you can't even see it. You begin to think this is normal living. Because you can't see yourself as being captive. She said, I freed 1,000, but I could have got 1,000 more, but they did not see that they were slain. <laughs> Shaitan is the master deceiver, masterful. But his power is only an invitation. Talks about the Quran where he said that, I, 
I called you. I, I, that's all I did. I had the, uh, the capacity to call. That Allah made a promise. And I made a promise that wasn't true. But you obeyed me. Therefore, blame yourself, don't blame me. The power is with you and I. In the end, Shaitan would say, don't blame me, blame yourself. And most people give their power to Shaitan, but Shaitan said, oh, don't blame me. My capacity was only to make the suggestion. And you obeyed. Therefore, blame yourself, don't blame me. So we recognize the power in seeing ourselves as a servant of Allah. That's the most powerful position you can take. To see yourself as Abdullah. Understanding what Abdullah means. That you comfortably see yourself as a slave servant of Allah, highly glorified as that there's no fault. That's why we make that shahada tain. La ilaha illallah, shahadu la ilaha illallah. That declaration is a declaration of freedom. There's no power, no being, no force worthy of your bond, worthy of your devotion other than Allah. And when you make that declara declaration, not only are you making a declaration of faith, but more importantly, you're making a declaration of freedom. Rabbi Nantina for doing hasanah, or for the akhirati hasanah, what you can do. So I mentioned to you about community life. I want to I want to read a hadith to you that will help us to see what is essential for the development of community life. I said that we are born into a world that needs us. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam said, shall I inform you about the inmates of hell? Every vulgar, uncivilized, and proud person. Those attributes will not allow us to experience healthy community life. It's impossible. Vulgarity, being uncivilized and being proud, pride, that was Shaitan's problem. It says, and the Khairul Minhu, that I am better than you. You can't have healthy community life where people feel they're better than one another. We say Allah is al -Jami. He's the one that brings his forces together. He brings all his uniqueness together. All of them have a certain role to play. There's not one better than the other. When Allah created the human being, he gave that human being an ability and a capacity to function in the world. All of those worlds, are, are, all those positions are essential for the development of life. Just like the sun, moon, stars, rain, all of them are different, but they're essential for the function of life. So he said, shall I inform you about the inmates of hell? What is hell? Hell is a, hell is a, a painful condition. A painful condition. A bad condition. He said, these are the inmates of hell. Those who are vulgar. Oh, man, look at the world we live in today. Vulgarity. At an all-time high. Indecency, barbarism, coldness, callousness, ignorance is reproducing itself in the world. How do you have a society where there has become this trend for just cutting people in the face? I know you're seeing that all over the news. I mean, just, just 
Ignorance reproduces itself. I want you to understand that now. I want you to look at how ignorance will reproduce itself. That is ignorance that a man would pick a knife up and feel comfortable to, to slash a woman. I mean, I'm talking about repeatedly. On and on and on and on and on. Indecency, vulgarity, cold. So he said that, shall I inform you about the inmates of hell? Every vulgar, uncivilized, and proud person. If we want to have community life, we have to come back to peace. When we come back to peace, we'll come back to love. When we come back to peace, we'll come back to sanity. When we come back to peace, we'll come back to decency. When we come back to peace, we'll come back to forgiveness. These are the attributes that will allow us to experience healthy community life. Where we can bond, share, respect, support, enable other human beings to function effectively in the world. So Allah says, I am your evolver, therefore serve me. Peace be unto you. Assalamu alaikum. <laughs> Allah wa 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 Allah wa